Welcome back everybody to day three of the World Championship Series live in Poitiers, France. We just secured our first grand finalist, Hydra, and our next match will determine who will join him on the final stage. First up, this player is the only foreigner left in the top four. He is in the top four for the first time in WCS and is looking to fulfill his dream of becoming the WCS champion. Boy, D.A., he needs your support. It is Bunny. be going up against a six-time tournament champion. He's looking to be the first player to win a WCS title three times. Give him your support, boy TA. It is CM Storm's Pult. Will it be the Danish turn or will Captain America move on to the finals? Players shake hands. We'll find that soon enough, but first, let's head over back to the expert's desk. Thank you very much, Smix. I am very excited for this second semi-final. Bunny, the last remaining European in this tournament, goes up against a six-time StarCraft II champion, a two-time WCS Premier League champion. This is a big opportunity for Bunny to make sure that internationally and globally, everybody recognizes him as one of the best European players in 2015, in StarCraft 2. I'm joined on the desk here by Fennec, Kolaris, and Todd. First of all, let's continue this talk about Bunny. It's all about Bunny right now. Within the new WCS, he is this last remaining European. Todd, talk to me about Bunny as a player outside of StarCraft and also inside. Um, outside of StarCraft, he's a, he's a very shy and quiet guy. You know, I don't know him that well, but he's, uh, it takes some time you know, for him to open up and becomes a little bit more chatty. He's definitely one of, you know, one of those ni nice guys, but a lot more on the reserved mm -hmm. side of things. Inside of game, actually the exact opposite. Gets right in your face and then crushes you. I've played him on many occasions in tournaments, in WCS, in DreamHack, and if he was the equivalent in real life of what he is in, uh, in StarCraft, I think our friend Kyle Irish described it be best. I would be brunt and bruised because he would be crushing <laughs> me all the time, but yeah. Um, it's funny, actually, you know, to think about that, but in StarCraft you have to play aggressive no matter what. And he, as nice of a guy he is, he knows how to win, he knows how to attack, how to be aggressive, and he's just a sick player. Claris, you've there. been casting uh, the World Championship Series now for three years, from 2012 all the way to the current year. You've seen Bunny from the beginning until he, where he is right now. You've seen the transformation from opening up the very first Premier League in 2013. He was the opening match, and now here he is in the semi-final and this is his biggest posted result in a Premier League tournament to date, his first semi-final. What does WCS mean for him? It means a whole lot. It was, it's the tournament that we've even heard it from him time and time again. He looked at as a young little StarCraft, I was going to go scrubbling, uh, <laughs> and then moving up through the ranks to find this amazing performance that he's been having lately. The, he, he started his WCS all those years ago in TVT, and now he finds himself in TVT again as the remaining foreigner in WCS. It's, it's, quite, it's quite impressive. It's a big moment for him for sure, but as much of a big moment this is for Bunny, it's just another moment here for Paul. This is another tournament. This is another semi-final. He's been in multiple semi-finals in the past. If he wins this, he's not only going to be the first two-time WCS champion, he'd also be the first time for three trophies to his name, which is very, very impressive and very consistent, considering that Paul's been around since the very beginning here, Fenner. Yeah, if he can get that third trophy, that's a monumental uh, achievement within the, uh, the World Championship Series history. It would be absolutely huge if he could do that. I mean, Paul is uh, arguably one of the most successful players that is played within the WCS. He's been in the top eight multiple times, multiple top fours, two championships, looking at a potential third trophy as well. I mean, I would say within StarCraft. Yeah. Uh, again, the consistency that this guy is able to pull out is phenomenal from the very, very beginning when he was back winning the Super Tournament in GSL all those years ago to still being relevant today. I mean, how do, you, how do you doubt this guy? In earnings, he's very high up there. He's yep. definitely like top five, right? Yeah, he's top five overall uh, within WCS alone. Being where he is today has pushed him over the $100,000 earnings from just Premier Leagues alone. Not bad. 
which is very good, actually. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> very impressive overall for Paul. He has to be coming into this as the favorite, right? Yeah. He's definitely coming into this as the favorite, especially after that win off after on, on 4GG in the last game. Um, he said in the, in the last series that he doesn't like playing against Mech, but he was still managing to take it down. So he prefers playing against the style which Bunny is going to be playing here, which is the bio yeah. tank style which most people prefer. And um, Bunny is going to be playing quite similar to Paul, I think. Both of these players like to go for the solid game, right. whereas 4GG was more aggressive. He'll be going for banshees and stuff. The thing is, Bunny is known for his TVZ and TVP, not really for his TVT yeah. as much. I think he's, it's been his weakest matchup uh, for some time. So I hope for him he's been practicing in it, because going into this tournament, there, there was quite a few good turns, and he was one of the guys you know, that was one of the favorites to make it far too. It's toppled him so many times in WCS. It has yep. toppled him so many times. Back from the beginning, like I mentioned before, all the way through the couple of seasons that we've had. So this is an opportunity for him to kind of prove the doubt was wrong, especially in that department. Do you think he expected to get as far as he has done here? Is that safe to say that, I mean, semi-finals? I think he's been quietly confident about himself. I mean, I haven't spoken to him, and I don't know 100% if that is the case, but the way he has progressed through StarCraft, especially in 2014, now coming into 2015, yep. I, I think he is quietly confident within himself, even against Snoot, who uh, he played last round. All right, let's talk about these two players matching up together now. We've got Bunny from Denmark, we've talked about it. Quite an aggressive player. Paul, very aggressive himself. Fenner, how do you think this is going to shape up when these two go head to head? Uh, as I said, he's, Paul's going to be liking playing against this style. Um, the thing is, Paul, he's going to be stronger once he gets to the mid latish game. I'm going to say latish game. He's not really going to get that far because TBT is so aggressive right now. Not many players going up for that three base. It's all about the early game engagements. What Bunny's got going for him is he's got amazing Banshee control. And he likes to go to more Banshees than people, most people usually do. So if he can get the lead in the early game, with Banshees getting in there, he's really good at the multi-prong, pulling units around for Paul, or at least I assume he will be. And then if he can get the damage done there, then he doesn't have to worry about the big Doom Drop game, which Kalaris was talking about before. There's a lot of people right now in TVT all about the Doom Drops. Drop on that production, cut it out, and then there's not much you can do. One thing that's uh, interesting when looking at these two players and thinking about Terran versus Terran, Paul's just come off a big win against 4GG, a yeah. very, very big win. We all know that he's the Terran expert. When anyone looks at Terran versus Terran, you always go to 4GG. He's very rarely losing in that matchup, but was just eliminated from the tournament. But then on the other side of things, when you look at now Bunny versus Paul, and when it comes to their head-to-head, -head, the last two meetings that they've had, they've only played three times, bear in mind. Bunny's won them both online and one offline as well. The last time they played was in the Intel Extreme Masters in Toronto in August of 2014, not that long ago, and Bunny beat him 2-0. And then a few months earlier than that, Bunny beat him again 2-0. That must give him some confidence going up against such a giant. Yeah, and the thing is, he got to watch that game versus 4GG very closely yeah. as well. You know, he was already through to the next round, so all he had to do, you know, was sit back, enjoy, look at what Paul's capable to do, and as yeah. good as it was, he got a very cool glimpse into how Paul might play against him. Bunny, you know, as much as TVT, I think is, is his weakest matchup, at, at least result-wise. Yeah. He's got some very good builds out there. To qualify for Challenger, like in the very first uh, qualifiers that he played in for WCS, he played against Marine Lord, and I think it was a decisive match uh, for him to be right. able to qualify into Challenger. And he beat Marine Lord with some very nice builds. I remember this one game on Merry Go Round where we opened Raven and all that. So he knows how to play a, little, a lot of different builds, and that's really going to help you yeah, up against the Paltz, who's also very versatile. Okay, so here are the maps for this best of five between these two players Catalina, Vani Research Station, Inferno Pools to squeeze itself into the middle of these five maps. Expedition loss and then Deadwing. So a three player map, then back to a small Vani research station. Then we start to open up an Inferno Pools, back to small, back to big. How do you think this is going to play out between these two? Catalina here, I think that Bunny's pick, and it makes sense. It's a small map. There's a lot of places where you can get Banshees in in the early game. Like I said, Bunny's going to be looking at the Banshee play to try and get the lead here. And then the next pick, Paul's pick, Vani Research Station. Great map for drops. There's a cliff across the entire front. You can sneak up and down the left and right sides throughout the entire game. And then Inferno pulls Paul's pick. Once again, another map where there's loads of dead space. You can sneak drops in. So. It just lines up with what we've been saying. I mean, notice the vetoes, though. Bunny is the one in the past two series he's been playing that has been vetoing overgrowth continuously, not only against Snoop, but also against uh, Polt here. And 
It seems as if he just doesn't mind uh, actually having Inferno Pools or even Secret Springs if Port were to veto something, Inferno Pools itself, sneaking into this map pool. So it's, it's interesting to see the actual dynamic come in here. I wonder if he has it veto on a ladder. I feel like it's the possibly, last map yeah. he would ever veto. <laughs> yeah, possibly. That, that uh, does happen quite often. But guys, I'm going to have to put you on the spot. We haven't done this very often this weekend, but we're going to do it here. We are going to do predictions. I want to know the player that's going to go through and by what score. Todd, you're going to start us off. Who's going through and by what score? Uh, it's difficult, man. I feel like Paul has a better chance and he might be able to do it, you know, with a 3-2. This, uh, Paul's career hasn't been leading up to this moment. Bunny's career has. So I'm going to go Bunny 3-2. I think, like they said, it's going to be an extremely close series, but after seeing Paul in that last series, I'm going to have to go with Paul 3-2. All right, so two for Paul, one for Bunny. We'll see which way this series is going to go. If Bunny can get to the final, he would be the first non-Korean finalist in a very long time. Who can guess the first one? It was Stefano a very, very long time ago. Let's find out who's going towards the grand finals to face off against Hydra. Thanks, guys. It is time to kick off the second semifinal here. We got some TVT action, and boy, oh boy, have these guys uh, had some interesting bouts before. Yep, the cool thing about the last series that the boys at the desk discussed a little bit is that it was one week after Paul had that great victory at Red Bull Battlegrounds in Detroit where he, he just destroyed Tasia 3 to nothing. So going into that series at the Index from us, I was like, well, Paul is probably a favorite against Bunny, right? Well, no, Bunny didn't just win 2-0, he almost won 3-0 in a best of three. Now, Nate, if you ask, like, Roddy, that does not make any sense. It was really cool. Game number one back then, it was on Catalina. Bolt was losing. In a certain moment, he forced a really awkward base trade, but Bunny was still in control of it, up to the point where Bunny only had one orbital. And like Bolt, he went for the biggest suicide mission of all time, and one of his absolute last Marines got the final bullet off on that command center. He lost all his units, but then he wrote, you got 400 minerals, and Bunny's like, <sighs> no. And then Paul is like, die? Question mark? And, Bunny, uh. and Bunny's like, oh, I guess so. So then they had to replay it. But then Bunny still won, which I thought was the most amazing thing. Because normally that's so demoralizing, you know? If you're ahead in a game and somebody like somehow sneaks out of the tie just to do it all over again, Bunny was great. But the TVT meta Nate has shifted quite a bit. Yeah, Taren versus Taren going to be pretty crazy. We are loaded into the first game of our second semifinal. Our last remaining non-Korean player in this tournament in blue in the bottom right from Team Liquid, it's Bunny! And on the 9 o'clock position off Catalina, we have our Red Terran player. He's on the hunt for championship number three, it's Bolt. I have to admit, Nate, I did not even expect him to come this close, to come this far already. Of course it's Paul, and I did not underestimate him, but if you would have told me he's going to be in the semi-finals against Bunny, well, I, uh, I would have been willing to take a friendly wager against that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it goes without saying that we all expected Hydra to be the strongest player, or at least most of us. I, I, Hydra was my pick from the very beginning. I like 4GG a lot. Our pick, Nate. Why do you always have to exclude me from your thoughts and feelings about players and other things in life? You know I felt the our same way. Our pick, Roddy. He was our a pick. He was our pick. He was our baby to go through all the way, <laughs> and he made it. And the real question is, as we start this series off, both, both of these players, by the way, are much less aggressive than 4GG. And on this map, already getting a taste of that since they're both going to open up Reaper. So we're going to have a slightly slower start to this than one might expect for Catalina. But uh, which one of these guys can actually beat Hydra? I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> that's, one, like, that's all I'm thinking about right now. The oh. guy, as the Muslim always loves to say, can bring his A++ game, but then add another two pluses or something, you know? Like, he's going to have to evolve right in front of our eyes. Their hairs are going to have to turn yellow, you know? Super stay in stage three immediately. Just skip part two, and then maybe one of these guys will be able to actually give Hydra a very good run for his money. Uh, either way, this is going to be an amazing semifinal, and everybody loves a good old TVZ final. So we're in for a treat, Nate. Yeah. Uh, based on the way that both of these players have opened up, there's no second depot for Pult. So looking like he will just go for a quick reactor after his Reaper. Now Bunny, since he did build the second depot, it's highly likely that he queues up a second Reaper. And he does have an extra one queued up on the barracks. So he's going to be looking to, you know, not do much with the first. It's very difficult unless unless because there was no SCV scout. Like if Pult's Reaper goes to the northeast like base and Bunny's goes straight to Pult's base, 
Wait, that, that could actually happen. Mm -hmm. What I kind of like, yeah, he might actually be able to get an STV kill. Oh, oh, he's gonna send it back. That's very smart of Paul. But you know, Nate, the one thing I like so far, hopefully nothing too crazy happens over here that we have to shout our lungs out because an STV is about to die. Well, actually, I'm gonna... Oh, oh. He's gonna get it! It's nice! He's gonna slip out, and the big thing is, he knows now that it was oh, Reaper opening from his opponent. Reaper, though, Nate. He might get the Reaper, though, No, one more He's volley. running, 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 so running. Cool. Yeah, oh, he gets he it! he does not get away! Okay, and then I still like this for Paul. What I like for Bunny is Bunny has obviously been watching that TVC series that Paul played before. He knows how Paul like to open, and Paul, he has been opening rather careful, right? With that uh, command center on the high ground, Bunny's like, if we're doing the same build, oh. I can actually build my command center on the low ground. And that's what I like, minor advantages, because he was able to watch that TVT series earlier today. Yeah, he, he understands where Paul is willing to pull punches in order to stay alive in the yep. early stages of the game. And Bunny, he's pulled out a lot of these Pretty, pretty economic defensive openings uh, in his recent Terran versus Terran games. He recently took a 3 0 series over Happy in the Fragbite Masters uh, winner bracket, and he actually took that series in a pretty convincing manner. I will say, just to touch back on what the guys in the desert are talking about when it came to the maps, he, he actually viewed overgrowth there too. They ended up playing on Secret Springs. It seems Bunny is comfortable on playing any map in the current uh, map pool. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, Nate. He is quite the beast. So, so far, Paul is going to follow it up with his starboard. Everything is pretty much the same. Bunny's throwing down a bunker already. Perhaps a tiny... I'm not sure why, because he has a very good idea of what he's playing against. And I don't think... Unless he would be worried about Hellions is running yeah, up the ramp. Yeah, I, I think that's actually exactly what he's worried about, because Paul... With the Hellions, he could be looking to do a quick drop with this Medivac that he's going for. There's no second gas for Pult, so all it can really be is either a Viking opening or a Medivac. Since he knows what Bunny is up to, he can get a pretty pretty good read on this, and I think he might go Viking just because he sees that Starport landing on the Tech Lab. But uh, the bunker is just Bunny's way of staying 100% safe. I talked to the Muslim a lot about this because I was having difficulty dealing with this early Hellion pressure, and he said, just put a bunker in the front, mate, and you're going to be safe. <laughs> Muslim probably doesn't have a whole lot of experience with bunkers in his own natural, more in the Zerg's natural. But other than that, Nate... He, he still knows. He still knows what bunkers are good for. He's always there to give you some good advice. Just kidding, Ben. I know you're watching. No, I, I'd, still, I'd still agree on that part. But the Banshee's on the way. Cloak being researched. So Bunny going for delayed Banshees is going to give him that opportunity to go for that big, uh, that big play he likes to make, which is more about having multiple Banshees and really pulling the opposing Terran player around. Uh, I do like that he's getting a deep up here. What Bunny wants to do is just cut off a potential for a big Hellion run by while a Medivac elevators Marines or drops him in his main base. He, he There's still a potential that he elevates both, elevators both the Hellions and the Marines, which is a very real threat for Bunny right now. Uh, what I think is very interesting right now is that Bunny is keeping his first Banshee at home. That's why he's agreeing with you, Nate. He thinks it's a very real threat as well. So here comes the Banshee. Cloak is not ready yet, so he's going to have to be rather careful. But I do think he's doing a pretty okay job with the way that he has positioned his units. And I think that Bunny is handling this relatively well. Like, yeah. he might end up losing a few SCVs, but he shouldn't lose a ridiculous amount. And then having the Banshee at home helps a significant amount in terms of dealing with this. He has that Hellion as well to help uh, pepper out these bad boys. And the SCV count does not really drop all that much for Bunny. If there's one thing that Bunny is exceptionally good at, and this was something I actually noted in his series versus Happy, he was always ahead in workers. In this case, despite taking worker losses from Pole, he's still pretty damn close to being even. Bunny is exceptionally good at the simple things Rotterdam, building depots and building SCVs. I mean, this is a situation we've seen often in the past, and so many times you see the Terran players send their first Banshee across the map regardless, because they are hoping that the uh, middle line is going to be exposed, that he will be able to do a lot of damage with it, but then they forget about their base at home, and they lose way more than they're supposed to. So it was a very smart move and decision by Bunny to keep the Banshee at home, and now he should be able to get a couple of SCV kills yeah. here, maybe two or three, but this that will already even things up. This is where Bunny becomes one of the most annoying players to go against. I told you, man, he's going to wait for two Banshees, and because he had to keep one home to defend, he oh. actually gets away with this when he might force out another scan. Still a big pain to deal with as the Banshee in the natural has just been going ham. This is really good for Bunny. He killed six SCVs. He's ahead by four workers right now, and above all, these Banshees are still alive. So frustrating. Paul has burned the scan already as well. Well, this Banshee is about to run out of energy, so it should die as soon as the Viking... Look at that Viking! Paul was falling apart a little bit. He never sent it back unless he was chasing something that didn't really exist. Those optical illusions on Catalina, man. Haven't we seen them all, Nick? Hey, man. The Easter Bunny brought an extra special present in the form of some Banshees <laughs> today. Bunny has, uh, I think that's a very sharp way. And Pull, you know, this is something that I've noticed a lot in this tournament. He's been blocked at 70 supply for a good while. He's got two depots that are just halfway done now. So he basically started them in a panic after the Banshees killed his SCVs. Bunny, he's, he's just doing, he's doing everything right now 
better when it comes to all the little details, and he's still getting a bit of damage done. He I, has I, Marines I and tanks at home. I don't really like that Paul is moving out on 9 Of course, that's very easy for us to say because we see a lot more than Paul does, but he's even in tanks. His team is nowhere near done. I mean, the best case scenario is that Bunny repositions the tank and he's able to get a couple of volleys off on it. I guess he does have Vikings, correct? Well, it's three against one Viking. Does Bunny have... Okay, so the only thing he does have going for himself is that he has air control, so maybe Paul will be able to even things up just a tiny bit. I love that this Bunny actually slips one of these Hellions back over here to pick off an SCV or two, but forcing Paul to look back, to focus on dealing with this. These tanks should be able to clear out this bunker and this supply depot, but with the support of the Banshee, which I'm not but exactly sure where it is, I think it could, it could come back. Actually, it's going to continue to harass. Bunny has Stim, and Paul does not have Stim. Of course, yeah. it's very risky to Stim if you don't have Combat Shield, because all of your Marines will literally die immediately against yeah. three tanks. But If Bunny yeah. sees that these tanks are moving forward, like what Bunny yeah. really needs to do is scan Paul's army as much as he can, and this is where things are going to get dicey for him, because that siege tank takes the first shot. Thankfully, both no. of his tanks are in range, yeah. so it actually works out pretty well for Bunny. He's actually going to pick oh, up all the siege tanks here, because Paul doesn't get that second bit of vision on the north tank and you know what? This is just this is just looking phenomenal he, for Bunny. He could chase his army, Nate. He could chase yeah. his army easily. The army of Bunny right now is way stronger than the army of Paul. And if he smells blood, then he should just go for it. He's going to stim two Marines just to see, hey, what's up? What's going on over there? Uh, he's starting to lose track of that army, but this is a disaster game so far for Paul and a phenomenal game by Bunny. It all started off with that great defense early on against the Hellions, against the Marines, having that Banshee help out. And look, these Marines, they can't run. They don't have Stim. He uh, is forced to boost okay, that well, medevac look. over. He tries to grab it. Now, Stim is completing soon for Paul. The only advantage that Paul will have anytime soon is that plus one armor and his combat shields being just a tad ahead. Now, what Bunny would really like to do is get a couple of these tanks back. He could siege the Starport and the Southern Barracks. Oh, he's going to run up and actually just snipe the siege tanks. Bunny's going, he's just going crazy. Yeah, he's absolutely going ham. Combat Shields is about to finish up for him as well. He can pick up a few more units. He is just all over game number one so far in Catalina. Of course, you know, never count Paul out, but he's down dirty army supply. I feel so many things are going for Bunny right now. This might be a good engagement here for Paul because most of the units are not participating in this battle for Bunny. So excellent job there by uh, Paul jumping on that minor opportunity immediately, but he's definitely not out of the woods just yet. Yeah, that was still a lot of Marines that died for Paul pushing up to kill those two siege tanks that were lifted into the main. Uh, other small things to but note. This is the real army now. Yeah, I mean, Bunny's moving out with another massive force. The only advantage Polt has is this plus one armor finishing. He has his plus two on the way. He's actually going to try to come kill these tanks from the high ground, but loses all these Marines. Now he wants to boost over and try to get on top, but oh, Bunny, oh, oh, you know, he's... Pickups. He's taking care of him. He's a, he's a good he's a good guy to work with. If there is one thing I'm convinced of is that Bunny has unlocked that achievement five years ago. But if he didn't yet, somehow, some way, he just got the hot pickup thing. Yeah. This is Bunny's real big moment. He does not even have an armory on the map. So going into later upgrades isn't really going to work. He wants to deal with a critical blow to pull right here, right now. Tank siege up in the natural. Grabs a Viking that's running over to defend the siege tanks. They're all still in the main base for Pult. He's running over. The Marines are cornered in this mineral line. He's going to lose absolutely every single one of them. He can even charge up this ramp and he's going to. Yes, he is. He's going to clean up these tanks. He's going to work on the orbital. And Pult has to know as well that there is no coming back from this one anymore. An absolutely great game one by Bonnie that should give him some confidence if he needed that to continue this semi-finals because this was just a close to flawless TVT by him. Bunny did everything right that he needed to do. Fantastic Banshee control. He didn't get supply blocked. He kept building units. He stayed ahead every stage of the game. And game one will go to the Team Liquid Terran player. He made it look easy almost, Nate. I know it's never easy. It can't possibly be easy to win a TVT against Paul, but just everything made so much sense. Like you said, it started off early on with that defense against the Hellions and the Marines. Then the way that he dealt with those Mar uh, tanks outside of his natural as well. Like, he didn't have Viking control, so he didn't have vision of the skies, but he was still always able to reposition. He threw down the scans at the right moment, and the one time where Paul hoped that his Vikings allowed his tanks to creep a little closer and get a couple of volleys off, he lost that little tank skirmish. So everything that Paul tried to achieve over there, the only thing he was ahead in the Viking count, it didn't matter anymore because he already lost the tanks. And from that point on, well, Bonnie knew that it was playtime. Yeah, that was a... Uh you know, I, I just want to just make sure to emphasize something I've just been seeing constantly throughout this tournament in a lot of Pult's games. He's been getting supply blocks pretty heavily. I mean, if he's making a lot of big trades, then it's usually not as big of a deal once you get closer to max that favors him. But there were a couple of key moments where 
Bunny just had a ton more units out. Somehow he got his stim out faster despite all that. And then his Banshee control really, really punished Pult when he decided to move out onto the map because he killed a good amount of SCVs while yeah. already taking the lead just from remembering to build them constantly. And let's not forget about the small things, Nate. The moment that Pult throws down the scan and that Banshee just gets out of there, you know, just with yeah. one more hit. That's so frustrating because that Banshee came back and got one or two more SCVs. The Viking was out of position. Just a frustrating game number one by Pult. Of course, he has so much experience. He can get behind that. He can, you know, just forget about it, move on, pretend that Vani Research is the first game that you are going to play. Yeah, he's uh, he's just got to take it back to square one for this map. Vani Research Station, like you said, Roddy for TVT. This is still another two-base map. The meta game for high-level Terran versus Terran. Unless you're one of those brave souls willing to go mech and try to bring the game out to the long to the long haul, you're you're going for a lot of big drops. And I'll tell you what, if we didn't see Bunny get such an opportunity to make those big pushes, he would have been looking for a big four to six medevac drop. And if Pult had been given time, he would also be looking for the same thing. Mm. I'm very excited to see how this one plays out because this is a map that indeed there's so much space in the natural. Of course, both players will probably t throw up a couple of turrets and stuff so they don't have to worry about drops non-stop. But there is, the, there is a lot of potential for this to be a very high-paced game with a lot of action going on as well. And I feel as soon as players starting to take their turret commands and if it gets to that phase, then we're going to see an absolutely great uh, back-and-forth game. But of course, the one thing that's quite risky is there's not a whole lot of space in the main base of Vani Research to throw down your production facilities. So if that's you right. lose a battle once, you're going to have to worry about tanks just sieging up on the low ground, but they will still be in range of most likely your reactors, your rexes, maybe a factory or stuff. So building positioning is actually very important on this map, more than maybe yeah. any other map out there. It's very important to note that oftentimes in TVT you want to keep your army next to that cliff more than your main ramp because that's just such a sweet <laughs> spot to put some tanks under. It makes things very rough to deal with. One of these two players will have a chance at that trophy as we load into game number two here in the second semifinal of the World Championship Series. We're on Vani Research Station and our first player spawning in the north position representing Team Liquid in Denmark. He is Bunny! And his opponent, spawning in the south position, the Korean Terran representing CM Storm, he's Pult! I must say, though, in the middle of a series, Pult never looks too faced by anything that's happening within the games. Like, he never looks shaken up, he never shows a whole lot of emotion. Definitely, if he wins or loses, at the end of a series, you can sometimes see, like, a little bit of frustration on his face or a big sigh, but as long as the games are going, as long as there is hope, you never really see him being distracted by anything. And I think that's truly one of the attributes that made him win so many tournaments over the last three, four, almost five years by now. Yeah. Just think about Bunny's experiences in professional StarCraft compared to Pult. Pult's got it all. He's got the big titles, he's got the big Korean championships, the European yeah. championships, the American championships. Bunny coming into all of this, you know, the first bit of little piece that we got to see in the group stage of the round of 16, he was talking about this is the most important tournament to him. You look at someone like Pult, you want to take that away from him. You want to know what that feels like. And for Bunny to be up 1-0, it's got to be a good feeling. Uh, if Bunny makes it to the final, that is a legendary moment. That may very well be the most joyful moment of his career so far. While for Pult, well, probably the only thing that will truly ever excite him again is either winning a GSL Code S or winning, you know, BlizzCon, the big one yeah. at the end of the year. <laughs> because he has won so many tournaments. He's won two WCSs. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to be the first player that can say like, hey, I was the first one to win two. Now I'm the first one that has won three WCS tournaments. And that's a, that's a record that's going to take quite a while for someone else to break, considering that uh, he'll be challenging, of course, in the upcoming seasons as well. I must say, MMA became pretty damn close if we would consider GSL this season in uh, yeah. WCS. <laughs> he was very close. Anyways, Bunny as SV has arrived in the main base of Bolt. is going to see if anything funky is going on, but nothing too crazy just yet. Yeah, I mean... Let's think about it like this way, Kev. The last time we were we were commentating, you know, Terran versus Terran in WCS, it was all about the gas first, especially, you know, towards the end of 2014, most of 2014, in all honesty. These two guys like to play with the Reaper. They have a lot of different ways of dealing with all the aggressive plays that someone can bring your way, and they are good enough and confident enough in their skill that they do this often in a way that really surprises me because I was someone that would only ever go gas first because I didn't feel comfortable doing this. And, you know, going back to Demuslim, he's telling me these guys just have ways of dealing with everything, and it's really cool to see that they're not afraid. I, I really, I actually, Paul got the first shots off over there. Bunny has to be very careful. 
Uh, that was really awkward because, of course, that was not supposed to happen. But did you see the way that Paul yeah. this Reaper? <laughs> he forced the other Reaper to jump down. That's so good. And he got the first hits off. It's very good that Bonnie was paying attention there because obviously, if your Reaper is on the high ground, you would never ever expect to lose a fight against the Reaper on the low ground. But that is what would have happened if he wouldn't have sent it back. It also makes things a bit dicey, Roddy, because we have two Reapers on the map for Bunny now, chasing this one across the map. If he gets this first kill fast enough, then he can kite around the two Marines. In fact, he's going to at least be able to delay this factory, which is already, in my opinion, a pretty big victory. Yeah, but he's going to be able to get one SV kill over here, but he might lose one Reaper if the Marines pop on the... Uh, actually, I thought on the north side of the rack, but since he didn't do this... Oh, oh Bunny! Oh. No! Thus uh, ends up losing his Reaper. I actually yeah. thought he was going to be able to get the kill on the it's, Reaper of yeah, Bunny. Yeah, I, I agree. That if he had gotten the one-for-one one with that SCV, I'd say no, that's, that's reasonable resource loss. Polt can't do a lot with the one Reaper that he has, but it still sucks for Bunny that he didn't quite get what he was looking for. Well, the moment if he would lose that Reaper, then he's only with slow units against two Reapers that would still be alive, and they yeah. can hop in on one side, and two Reapers will obviously destroy two Marines, so then Polt would be forced to keep all four Marines together, and then if the Reapers hop in on the side where the Marines are not covering yeah. it, you're going to end up point. losing another SCV or two. It's a good point. He he just gets he gets a lot of things that are nice out of this because he can also now that he has a good number of marines out scatter on the map with the reaper. He's like, okay, you probably won't have a third base anytime soon, but if I can slip this in just past the six minute mark, this is when a lot of those gas first plays would be making some sort of move, right? You're you're be going into your quick medevac drop or something like that. Of course, he knows that he opened with the two reapers, so it's not likely to be that 4GG gas first style but if he can get in and at least see what the follow up is that'd be really nice and he sees that cloak researching the Banshee has not yet started did he cancel it immediately no never mind I, I, I don't think Bunny's really concerned about being scouted with that Polt's been his answer to this has often been the missile turrets and the Vikings but Bunny seems to be more than good enough at abusing those uh, there is always a sweet spot uh, a sweet spot if you're playing with cloak banshees like no matter how many turrets somebody throws up well unless you're playing a certain north american ladder terrence they will have a few more <laughs> turrets than one might expect but there is always a little bit of wiggle room but i wouldn't mind to see bunny cancel it either that's something that they used to do in the old days of course cloak is not all that expensive anymore and it can be very useful as well in the later phase in the game when there are a lot of tanks on the battlefield and you know what else kev there's something that we talk about a lot when we when we cast pulse games and we see him compete he likes to do the same thing over over and over again. He, he finds a build that he likes. He sticks with it against Bunny. He's opened up with this medevac, these Marines, but and this quite a few no He can just drive in, and I think that's actually going to make things a little bit better for him. I would maybe pick up a couple of these Marines. You don't want to lose these Marines. This is so much better for Paul. This is miles better than it went for him on Catalina. Look at all these dead bodies on the floor from Bunny. This is... Just a supply depot to finish the wall off fixes everything here, and Bunny's just going to take massive amounts of damage. He's actually boosting the Marines oh, over, snipes oh. the Banshee, and I think I think in just a moment, in the turn of a of a, uh, just a swivel, he just moves the Hellion straight in and kills every single SCV in the main base. Well, this is a disaster for Bunny this time. 19 SCVs have gone down, and this medevac is still full on HP. There are still two Marines and two Hellions in this medevac as well. This party ain't even over yet for Paul. So Paul is going to even things up right here. Uh, I mean, he's so far ahead, Nate. I, I don't know what Bunny's supposed to do. Of course, he has Cloak Banshee, so that is a way to maybe get a couple of SCV kills here and there. But we were talking about a couple, not 25. Bunny's got a long way to go if he wants to take this game back. TVT is the matchup where these sort of miracles actually happen, in my opinion, a lot more often than some others, but the just thing wait, is... Just wait until we have Disrupt, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually, Pult should start a missile turret in his natural. Well, Pult actually hasn't started a missile turret in his natural, and he has just one scan available. So, you know, he's playing with fire a little bit, but this Banshee also doesn't have any energy because it cloaked to attack those Marines, so... I think yeah. Paul realized that he's like, uh, I'm, I'm not really worried about this. I'm going to kill this Banshee. That wasn't actually necessary, by the way, now that I think about it, because there were only two Marines left, correct? Because um, the first Banshee did die, so this was the second Banshee when there were only two Marines left. I don't think that Bunny had to cloak for two Marines. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it's a, I guess it's a bit weird, because he, maybe he was just trying to dodge the, uh, the medevacs that came over. I'm not entirely sure. But he has this other Banshee that's going to move down the southwest side of the map. Uh, this is really, really tough because Polt realizes there's basically, because Bunny's going for a third command center and he's getting it faster than Polt, Bunny has reserved himself to saying, okay, we're going to have to play a very, very slow game. And what he's hoping is that he can set up just a good enough defensive position across his three bases that he can bait Polt into going for a really big drop or a really big push that he overcommits on and he can stomp. Otherwise, I don't see any chance that Bunny's supposed to win in a direct fight when Polt just has so much more money than him to invest into all this different infrastructure at the start. 
Man, I mean, this is already, uh, I love what we're just seeing right now. Just look at the minimap, how beautiful this is. He's walking forward in a line of Marines. It's making me feel like this is some sort of a hooligan squad in the middle of the city, you know? They're all lined up. And they are exploring, they are seeing, uh, trying to see if they can spot something that wants to get in trouble. Well, Paul doesn't have to worry about anything other than this Cloak Banshee that already sneaked its way on the left side of the map. But this is just great. He makes sure that he won't be caught out of position. He will make sure that he has eyes on the map everywhere. This is actually a really, really nice bit of damage. This Banshee's doing. Bunny needs a couple more plays like this. In fact, delaying this third so much super nice. He actually has a Banshee in the natural too. And if this one escapes, okay, it doesn't. But still, buys a lot more time for this Banshee to continue to do some work, Kev. If he wants to come back, this is the way to do it. Yeah, I mean, there's always a speech for that. Look at the work account now, actually. It's 40 against 43, but it doesn't change the fact that Paul is still uh, ahead in upgrades, has a stronger army, and I think overall just has better units as well. Just look at the tank count. There's no way that Bunny has as many tanks. Oh, actually, oh he tanks. gets another SCV kill. Okay, lost that Banshee, but I really feel like Bunny needed to make something happen, wow. and he hasn't, he hasn't, He's not home free yet, Roddy. He still has, as you mentioned, the smaller army, even though the workers are very close now. All he needs to do is force a couple of mistakes from Polt. He um. needs Polt to just screw up just a little bit and then he'll be right back in this game in a flash. I mean, the work account is indeed very promising for Bunny right now, but it doesn't change the fact that Paul has Stim, has Combat Shield, has plus one attack already, and has a minor tank advantage. Overall, he's just up a lot in supply. Paul is supply blocked uh, now once more, but the depots are about to finish up. Uh, it's going to be difficult for Bunny to secure three bases. Uh, Paul doesn't have to bomb rush this. He, of course, could always try, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. As long as he keeps Bunny on two bases, you'll be fine. Well, he's going to go for it. Yeah, he's going to rush uh, straight up towards this ramp. Those Marines are going to stand with the medevac support. The tanks for Bunny are allowed to fire. But if this isn't enough, then this game is going to end in the next 30 seconds or so, Roddy. So far, he's pushed Paul back a little bit. You think he's, he's going to pick up everything? His own Marines. You think he's going to pick up maybe two I, I, tanks? I think he knows that the amount of tanks, uh, shots it takes to kill his, he can't kill both siege tanks. So he can just push up yeah. without jumping in through the medevacs. And at this point, there really shouldn't be a way for Bunny to defend against this. Uh, Pult's even loading up units into medevac just to boost across to reduce the time it takes to rally his forces across the map. And at this point, I think we're going to be moving on to map two, uh, map number three pretty shortly. Bunny tried to bring this one back after taking so much economic damage early on. And the Banshee definitely did something. Got 14, 15 nasty V kills while both Banshees did. And a couple of uh, Marines. But it doesn't change the fact that during all that time, Paul is mining more money, which allows him to just build way more units. Uh, it is pretty hard to make a comeback after losing 25 SCVs in the first fight of the game. Yeah, if, if Bunny's first couple Banshees had been able to do what the follow-up ones yeah, did, exactly. I think we're looking at a completely different game here, Kev. But unfortunately for him, Pol pulling out the same strategy two games in a row, but just with a little bit of a better start, of course, with the way that those Reaper exchange happened, he's going to take it. Pol wins game number two. We're tied one apiece here in the second semifinal for the StarCraft II World Championship Series. I mean, of course, it's not just the way that the, the Reapers uh, exchanged some couple of gunfires early on. It's all about the way that the Hellions were just able to drive up into the main base. Yeah. Like, there's logic that goes for every single matchup, whether it's TVZ, TVP, or TVT. Units that are being dropped one by one, if you engage it, it's very easy to take care of. Yes. It. If you have to engage units that are all unloaded and are ready to fight, are ready to fire all at the same time, and they will only start taking damage by the time that they're all unloaded it's 10 times harder and this time well Paul basically didn't have any time to waste. He unloaded all the Marines and the Hellions just drove up by while on Catalina. He had to drop Hellions, fly back, drop Hellion or drop Marines, fly back, pick up the last two units. Like that takes a long time and you lose a lot of potential DPS, which he didn't have to worry about this game. And the other thing that really hurts uh, the aggressive player when you're in that position that you just mentioned, if your medevac is actually busy picking those Hellions up, a medevacs can't heal units while they're unloading. Yeah. So you're basically fighting a Terran who, yeah, of course he's going to put Marines and Hellions in your base, but he technically doesn't really have that medevac as a support unit until all the units are in your base. So it's easy to kill those Marines. You know, I'm sure as a Protoss player, you know, once Marines are being healed, they're very difficult to pick up. No, I mean, sometimes you see units being dro on, uh, dropped on top of Zealots and they just don't do anything. But if they get dropped in a little corner and they stim forward, well, then, yeah. then your Zealots are gone. You know, that's just, uh, it, it's common knowledge, of course. But uh, it, once again, this was just a demonstration of how much it changes being on top of a drop or not, or if things have to be dropped at all. Well, if you leave the doors open, they'll just ride, drive right in. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> that is literally what happened, Johnny. That's really awesome. Nice signs, boys. <laughs> give, give Beta key, please. There's a lot of people holding those signs up, I'd imagine. It's pretty fun, I can confirm. Yeah. Well... <laughs>
I heard it wasn't that fun for Pro Nostradi. You're, uh, you're a brave man. No, I am. You know, Nate. You know, a loss or two doesn't really shake me up. Just if I have seven in a row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys and girls, we are loaded into game number three here of the second semifinal for season one of Premier League in the World Championship Series. We're on Inferno Pools with horizontal oh. spawns in the top right position. The Blue Terran representing Team Liquid. He is Bunny. And on the left top side of Inferno Pools, we have a Red Terran player representing Cooler Master Storm. It is Bolt. Now, Kev, you know I like to do some cheeky builds every now and again. You're a cheeky guy, Nate. But I am not as dirty as some other Terran players. And I will tell you that some of the dirtiest things I have seen, and one of the reasons why I veto Inferno Pools on is, ladder. Is this PG dirty or not? We're, we're good, we're good. Okay. It's in, it's, it's, in, it's in horizontal spawns games against other Terran players who are dirtier than me. <laughs> and I tell you what, this map, these spawns, things can get really crazy because taking a third base is pretty close to impossible. Uh, it's so extremely wide open, or you want to be expanding power to your opponent, which needless to say is a little bit risky. I have no idea what to, uh, what to expect from this game, Nate, because it's safe to say that I haven't casted a whole lot of TVZ or uh, TVT horizontal positions on Inferno Pools, and I haven't played it a whole lot either. I would be lying if I did. Yeah, well, the most important thing to note is that in none of the games that we've seen so far today have there really been an, an any emphasis on SCV scouting player. So neither of them are going to know that they've gotten these very, very aggressive, these very close spawns until it's a bit too late. But Bunny Salen, you know what? Bunny did Maybe that. I did get those spawns. Bunny did SCV scout, by the way. On this map? On the Vani. Yeah, well, yeah, but he didn't do it all three games. Okay. And the thing is, he's not doing it now, which uh, even this late scout, it's still a bit risky to be doing this two rack cheaper because if it was cross spawns, yeah. then, you know, I'd be like, well, Bunny, you know, this is a bit of a blind risk. <laughs> in this case, it will pay off. Well, he's going to be able to find both SUVs will meet in the middle. So now Paul knows and Bunny knows. Uh, it's very important, of course, for Paul if he's, uh, whether or not he's able to find that second rack. That will change everything, the way that he approaches this game so far. It's very likely that Paul will just add on the reactor. Supply depot going down, he won't be able to spot that second rack, Nate. It's very important because this could actually trick Paul since Bunny has opted to open with two yeah. Reapers. Every all single game. Yeah, so seeing a second supply depot is not that weird. And it might not trigger him to think that, oh, this could be a threat. In fact, this position of this command center is uh, is actually Bunny's going to show up. He's going to be like, ah, yes, I can delay this a lot if I get in with just a couple well, of Reapers. It would have been even worse for Paul if he would have dropped it on the low ground, correct? Yeah. But and uh, then they, he would just never be able to complete it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you there. It's just like yeah. if he had tucked it somewhere else in his base, I think it might have been a bit easier to uh -huh. defend. But it's totally at the end. Uh, and the thing is... Paul is not 100% aware of this no, just he doesn't, yet. He doesn't know this at all. I don't think that Paul is expecting this. He may have seen it once or twice, but once again, guys, it's not just us who have a lack of experience on Inferno Pools. There is no way that Paul has played more than 10 TVTs horizontal position on Inferno Pools. I refuse to believe that. Yeah, at least none against players of this skill level that he'd have to really be in a competitive, a competitive environment, none at all. But... Here we go. There's three Reapers versus two. The control here is important. He gets in. He can immediately I deny this command part. center if he wants. SCVs are immediately pulled off the line. Polt knows how dangerous this is. He has no other standing forces on the map aside from these two Reapers. I can't emphasize enough on how good that reaction time was by Polt, though, because if he loses one of the two Reapers or even just eats a couple of shots, he is in so much trouble. Now he's still in a little bit of trouble, but he could not have possibly handled this any better so far, but now he did end up losing one uh, Reaper. More Reapers uh, are coming in. Now just keep the... Oh, good my on the weekend one to pull oh it God. back and now there's it's just one really reaper bad. the thing is once these reapers start to regenerate he's actually not going to be too worried about these two marines in the helium because he's reapers, got five Nate. reapers in his opponent's base roddy okay this might actually just end soon i mean the helium of course is going to be pretty awesome finally Paul was able to draw blood on one of these reapers but so many scvs have gone down in the process uh he ignored the helium or excuse me he ignored the scvs there i think he could have got a few more scvs instead he's going to try to work on his helium which would be awesome if he kills it he's going to be able to get no oh, oh my I think God. he's going to he's going to on he's, both sides. He's got another full health Reaper that could actually lead the charge, but the second Hellion repair. finishing he just, up. He just needs to repair that Hellion. We're working on yeah. right now 24 against 15. Of course, the orbital is a tiny bit quicker for Polt, but if I was Bunny, I'd be pretty damn happy with this, right? Yeah, that was uh, that one. That, you'd be beyond happy. Uh, Aesthetic? Yeah. 
He'd be, he'd be <laughs> jubilant, Rotterdam. He'd be jubilant. <laughs> loving it, Nate. Loving it. The Reapers come back into the main base for a little bit more SCV killing action. Tags one of those Hellions. Actually, he's, oop, he's very close to picking it off. Loses one of his Reapers, though. And here's where things do get a bit tricky. Because of the way the bunny's open, we see that he's gone Very for a third units. barracks. And he's going to go straight for Marine production. Even though Polt is opening with, with a Banshee, you might think, oh, well, Marines can shoot up. Marines are pretty good in high numbers. Yeah, but Banshees can out micro him. And this is where Polt's Reaper, uh, excuse me, Banshee control is going to be tantamount to his bringing this game back to an even stance. Yeah, and let's not forget about the Hellions either. They still pose some sort of a threat. Uh, of course, it's very good for Bunny that he's throwing up that bunker immediately. The same bunker that he threw up on Catalina. Polt again is getting his random Widow Mine, by the way. He had a lot of success with it. And the last time he played on Inferno Pools against 4GG, man, that was really intense. I love the micro on both sides. I love the very first reaction from Polt. If Polt would have been looking at his mineral line for one second, and then he loses one of his first two Reapers. I think it's safe to say, Nate, even seeing right now how close that came and how good it went for Bunny, well, if he would have lost one of his first Reapers immediately, it would have been all over. It's yeah, like there's, GG right there. Yeah, because then he, he didn't even have his Hellions or his <laughs> Marines started. He would have just been able to kill SCV straight up for a solid 25 seconds before even the first Marines popped out, and I don't believe those would have been enough either as the, the fourth and fifth Reaper were on their way at that time. And then all the SCVs would have been dead anyway. <laughs> yeah, so... Tough times in that regard. I will say, Bunny not taking too many chances. He did open up with three missile turrets spread around his base. He recognizes that Banshees are a serious threat. But Polt, he's looking to do exactly what Bunny did the last two games, which was abuse that those missile turrets don't move, Roddy. Yep, exactly. Uh, Polt should be able to find uh, a couple of openings here and there. Even uh, He's getting very unfortunate. I feel like four shots or so have been completely neglected or nullified because the SUVs ran oh. into the refinery. There's another turret there, uh, Paul, be careful. But at least, you know, he's disrupting the mining time a little bit. He got two SUVs there. It's a start. He can always get more done later. Yeah. So let's look at the most important differences in the way that both of these players are setting themselves up. Bunny has a much faster stim. This Banshee's going to come in and try to pick off a few more SCVs. He has the really second good. Banshee coming over to the main base during all this. So he's really trying to pull him apart. And he's starting to get some good worker kills. Yeah, that is awesome. But Bunny's production is also looking phenomenal. And Polt once again finds himself supply blocked with no depots under construction. Yeah, it's a very close game so far. Uh, you're making a good point there, Nate. This is a very painful one. 62 out of 62. And just now two depots are going down about. Well, I guess uh, at least he lost that Banshee, so he's able to produce a couple of SCVs. But there's still not a Banshee in the main base. Paul is doing some serious work. He's been, uh, he's like, well, Bunny, unlike, uh, just like you, I can kill SCVs too. Bunny did a great job with them on uh, Vani Research, and now Paul is just returning the favor. It's much yeah. more fun when you're on the other side, Nate. Uh, you know, uh, an old friend once told me, he said, when you make plays like this, the Banshee harass is nice, but he wasn't building a whole lot himself. Bunny, they're at even worker count now, but I feel like Polk could have had a lead after all of this. Yeah. He did a bit of harassing to himself with that. <laughs> well said. I mean, at least he was banking on minerals, which you can still spend, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> I, it's a very even game, which is crazy because so much has happened in this game already. You know, this being Inferno Pools, you know, everybody always being a little skeptic, Nate. I'm loving this game so far. It's been wild, and it's still going to be very interesting to see what happens when these players engage because Bunny has a really big opportunity. His first couple medevacs are coming out. He has a substantial the mine, Nate, lead. The mine. He has a substantial oh. lead in Marines, and this Marine, yeah, he's like, okay, well, meet. It's you and me for a walk. Well, There's, tripped, tripped, the, fell over. There was always this one guy that was being sent out by himself. Yeah, you're right. This is actually a little bit scary for Paul because he, he doesn't he slowed, have a lot. He slowed himself down, but he does have tanks, correct? Uh, take a look at the tank out yeah, of Paul. He has three tanks, so if, uh, I think he can put him a little bit more forward. I guess he's really afraid of uh, Bunny just stimming forward, but. Uh, I mean, stimming without combat shield is always a very risky thing to do. Even though combat shield is actually going to finish up within 10 seconds, these Reapers hopped into the main base. I hate when this happens in other matchups. This is a very good way, but also Paul is taking uh, care of it excellently. Yeah, those Reapers tell him where the tanks are, and I think he realizes no. that a tr an attack on the, on the main base would probably be ideal. Like, if he moves up here in the natural, it's still very risky. He can siege the orbital without being in range of Paul's tanks, that tank. and that's actually really nice. Oh my god, Paul unsieges all of his siege tanks at once. Bunny runs up, snipes one, steps back, and he is now sieging the natural expansion of Paul. And he's getting a lot of SUVs already. And he denies oh my the god. depots! He has killed 11 SUVs already, so Paul, well, he still has a little bit of free supply. Actually, his small mistake there by Bunny. He misrallied one of his medifacts, but he still has three of them, so it's definitely not the end of the world. Paul needs to take care of this as soon as possible, otherwise he's going to go from bad to worse. This concave for Bunny, he surrounds Polt's army. Polt has those tanks anchoring his forces, but still a tremendous amount of damage as he loses 14 SCVs in the midst of all this. Bunny still has the economy.
economy. He's holding on to his medevacs for now. It's so and, uh, intense. Should probably try to get this tank out of here, though. So intense. What an intense game. Bonnie on 81 supply right now. Pulled on 72. Bonnie is ahead in workers, though. He's nine workers ahead. And he's rallying reinforcements across the map. Has to be careful that he doesn't overstep his boundaries. Yeah, one thing that's nice for Paul, he got his infrastructure set up much faster. He's on five barracks. He's got a ton of reactors yep. going. So his ability to reproduce that marine count is actually a bit better. Bunny's just now finishing up his fourth and fifth barracks. But he is moving into a second factory, though, to replace those tanks he lost in the previous fight. A little bit of a drop behind the mineral line of uh, Paul in his natural. Paul takes a look at these tanks. The tanks are scary, but army-wise, we're very, very, very even right now. Bunny is expanding behind all this, and I love this Banshee. During all this madness so far, there is still a Banshee of Paul that's trying to to even things up a little further he saves it as well that's really good can be annoying again later on and now we have an armory finally coming in for bunny so we're going to see Polt get one as well moving into those later upgrades but still when your bold players are being this aggressive you can't be thinking too much about that third bunny has the command center on the way but if he gets pushed back and Polt can siege outside his base it's like yes you have an orbital to mine your base out a little bit faster but you, you know getting that third is still very very tricky man what a, isn't this amazing this is a 15 minute game right now where they were both at 105 supply each and in a game where just the build orders have gone so different so much has happened both players have lost so many war Workers. And just to see that they are dead even at the 15 minute mark, I almost want to find that remarkable. I can't understand that that has happened, yeah. but that makes it an awesome game so far. It's pretty cool, and I, I will say there's just a couple things that consistently give Bunny little edges here and there, and it, it often comes down to things like these supply blocks that I've been mentioning. Polt doesn't have too much room in his cap to produce his next wave of forces. He does have some depots lining up with it this time, but he's got uh, a lot of supply in the air in the southeast side of the map going for a you know, a double drop, 16 Marines is more than enough to clear out a mineral line, possibly okay. pick up some add-ons if he doesn't react in time. Well, Paul, this guy, it's funny that Bunny is being the aggressor over here while well, he's actually going up to three bases. He also has an armory, so he can start his next upgrade soon. Paul, on the other hand, does not have a third command site and doesn't even have an armory. I have the feeling that Paul wants to clean this up and then counterattack and just try to win. This is going to be a planetary fortress, by the way, which is a really interesting de yeah, decision. But you've said it, Nate, it's very hard to defend all three locations at once. Yeah, you know, in the old days, taking a PF as your third base meant you were a scrub. In these days, <laughs> nope. in, in these days, it means I don't want to lose my third. These Marines, Pult's like, uh, well, can't deny that base. Runs over to the main. Well, There's still not a lot here. But he actually lost a few Marines to that PF shot. Yeah, but he meant, okay, he's not going to be able to cancel because there are a lot of Marines over here for Bonnie as well. There is also a tank, so Pult's going to have to pick up these units. Yeah, that planetary fortress was That's actually... Reactor? Okay. That planetary fortress is actually one of the smartest things I've seen in but a very he, long time. But couldn't he just put a couple of Marines behind the, uh, the mineral line, though? Like, as all as a PM is. I totally agree yeah, with you, but still, the SUVs are still vulnerable. Yeah, I, I still think it's. I still think the way that it's positioned, it's not. It's much easier for him to defend that than. Oh. Uh, Oh, I totally agree with you, but there was definitely a small moment there where Paul should have been like, all right, I'm not going to work on this big building. I can just stim in, but what I can do is position my Marines behind the middle line. Yeah. That's what I do with my stock, isn't it? Ah, oh, I see, I see. Well, in, against Marines, high psych auto tracking actually makes that impossible, so... But I, don't think, I, don't, I guess he, he wouldn't rush that, that out. He wouldn't <laughs> rush that out. I'm, I'm thinking way down the line. Yeah, the, the, Usually you don't see planetaries <laughs> in TVT until that's actually happening. The, so, Well, this bitch just runs straight into a... Couple of bullets. Mayor Lee doesn't die. That was really close. Yeah, that was too close for comfort, but he is still alive, so might be able to get a. And now he's not. <laughs> I was want to say might be able to get a couple of SUVs, but he's not going to get anything. He's, the 2-2 lines up almost perfectly for these guys. The plus oh, one wow, attack Paul. for the vehicle weapons as well. Okay, well, I'm happy to see at least that Paul did decide to throw in an armory. I'm not sure when he did that because I checked before and he didn't have one. But Nate, he still does not have a turret command center. And yeah. this is becoming problematic. Paul is going to eventually try to force some sort of base trade against Bunny, which will actually be very difficult to do since since you're playing Marine Tank, cracking there. that planetary is very, very difficult without getting tanks. He there has to go for some sort of doom drop. Eventually. I think he should go in the natural because there is a PF and a tank there, and a combination of both is really is really gnarly. The tanks in the natural for for Bunny are not seized, and Paul sees that right now. Paul's gonna stim up. Uh, the Marines busting up the ramp, the tank siege up just in the nick of time to defend him in this position. And the thing is, you know, Bunny. if you're playing versus like a mech player, then sometimes you do some weird things. You spread out Marauders against a PF and soak up the splash. But with just Marines, you can't. And as you pointed out, Roddy, he has a tank on the planetary. Yep. 
I mean, this is becoming a real, real problem for Paul. It was slightly problematic earlier. He's going to try to bust down yeah. his ramp. He realized that he needs to move out, but all of his uh, Marines being cleaned up. He's going for a flank at the same time. Bunny still has a really good spread. He can pick up the siege tanks. It wasn't really well synced, though, by Paul. He might be able to clean this up in the end, but he lost so much. I felt like he lost so much more than he had to. He does break this, so that is definitely something that he can all do. But here are the reinforcements for Bunny as well. It's a lot of blue streaming across the map. Paul, that was awesome. The idea behind this all was great, Nate, but he didn't sync it up perfectly. The left side engaged way before the right side was able to participate in that battle. He yeah. saw those Marines run as fast as they could, but they were a little late to the party. Yeah, this is a very tough spot. Polt needs to do something massive right now. He's going to have to float over his main base for a third. Yeah. He's going to try to siege up this planetary, and I think he should actually be able to kill this bunny, not That's aware of where Polt's cool army move. is really hurts him. That's kind of a cool move by Polt, and what I think is even more bizarre, Nate, he oh. started 3-3 three, three upgrades. Oh my god, he's going to actually just go straight for the natural expansion. Oh, no, that medevac dies to be the, uh, the Paul Revere for Bunny's force and let him know what's coming <laughs> as he steps up into the natural expansion. Uh. Both <laughs> players now, they, I guess the whole goal is just on the production. Well, um, uh, Paul just lost on more than a handful of Marines every day. He has to be extremely careful with every single unit that he has. Base route scenarios, every unit counts twice. I don't think he has any medevacs over here, so there is no evacuation for those Marines. Bonnie is about to break the front over here as well. He, maybe not the tank, but at least he took care of almost all the Marines. And that is just going to be a GG. Bonnie takes a 2-1 lead. What a great game. Yeah, fantastic play by Bunny in a map that, you know, not a lot of games have been seen on. He had a really good uh, solution for how difficult, you know, we're always like, oh, that third base is so tough. Well, if you're if you're playing TVT or you're playing, I, I would even guess it's to some extent against the Zerg that you're having trouble against, the planetary force just locks things down pretty nicely. Yeah, th that was awesome, man. So much happened in the game. I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to start analyzing that or if we even should. Maybe we should just appreciate it for the beautiful game of StarCraft that it was and then just to think that it could have been all different. It, this game could have ended at the five minute mark if Paul wouldn't have been paying attention against those very first Reapers because that was such a dangerous, dangerous opening that Bonnie was throwing at Paul. Yeah, he, he was in a very tricky position and it shows that Polt has experience, maybe not as much on that map in competitive play, but he knows what to do when he sees a couple of Reapers jump up. He's like, okay, well, you know, three Reapers is obviously two racks play. Yeah. He knows that it's not like, well, if I kill two of your Reapers, then I'll slowly build up. It's like, no, you really need to focus on making sure you don't take too much damage. But let's see what the experts have to say about that, uh, Des. What's going on, boys? Not much, just watching a couple of games here in Thanius. Uh, kind of the same like you, just not talking as much. Uh, over with the boys here, Todd, Kolaris, and Fenner. Bunny's up 2-1. He's one game away from going to the finals, and that hasn't happened in a very long time for a non korean He'd be the first person to do that since Stefano way back when in the first season of 2013. It's a big feat we're about to see here if he can win this next match. If he, He's got a bit of a comfort zone. You know, Port can win, and then he can still go to the decider. But what are your thoughts so far on this series? Because it looks like Bunny has given the fight that a lot of people, including two out of three on this desk, weren't too <laughs> sure what was going to happen. Uh, you know what? I think it's just amazing. I know I predicted Paul, but Bunny is playing great. And it's not like, you know, he went for some cheeses, surprised Paul. He's played pretty much, to my, in my opinion, straight up. He went for big poshes. He went for decisive moves. And so far, it's worked out pretty well for him. I really like that last game, you know, the push, uh, you know, on the, on the expansion here yeah. of Paul, killing a few SCVs, killing... One of, uh, one of the assimilators, and then be later on. Uh, the counterattack, very, very decisive. You know, I knew as, as, as soon as he realized it was going to be, you know, some kind of base trade scenario, he went for it straight away and uh, managed that perfectly. What do you think about the, the, the choice of going for that opening, which gave him the lead in that map, and then gave him the lead in the series as well? Going for two barracks uh, before expanding, getting a, a lead against Paul, and that put him in the position. Is that a very brave thing to do there for, for, for Bunny? That was a very big surprise to me because we normally see him going for those solid plays. Two Rags Reaper? Who the hell does that in yeah. CBT? Uh, TBT, sorry. Um, maybe he did it because it was close positions and he wanted to get something there quickly. But still, for Bunny to do that on this stage right yeah. here, that seems crazy to me because he doesn't normally do that. But he seems strong. You see it sometimes on Catalina actually as a, uh, like, yeah. like a pocket choice to go for. And sometimes, but the thing that really stood out for me, especially on Inferno pools, was positioning from both of the players. Just constantly dropping scans on one another, always being aware of they always are. And the reason I, I picked Bunny throughout this series is because of the games that we saw he play on 
uh, in Gfinity against Fantasy. Of course, he didn't actually win that series, but there were sparks of brilliance there. His TVT has come on leaps and bounds over the past year, and it's at the place where it is now, where he's giving Paul a big, big difficulty. The next map is going to be Expedition Lost. Pretty small, two-player map. There are a lot of pathways where positioning and knowing of the army is going to be very important. You don't know where the army is. You can get surprised by a counterattack. How are they going to approach this map here, Fenner? I think there's the same they have been so far. I think Bunny will be going, will be swaying away from that Reaper. He's not going to be going for that again. I think he'll be going back into his Banshee play that gave him the success yeah. in game one. He had really control with that, good control with that. Managed to take out the tanks. He's going to be looking for that again. And Paul just going to be looking to defend that and get into the mid game so he can start dropping. That's where he's strong mm. when he gets into those Doom Drop scenarios. So if he can do that, survive the Banshee play, get the lead and start dropping all over the production, I think he can do it. All right, final question here, Todd. Is Port worried up there? He's behind. He's definitely is worried. Uh, he, Bonnie's been just playing amazing overall, and the way he's played, he's really basically saying, "I can go head to head, toe to toe with you. You need to be worried." And he's going to have to step it up if he wants uh, to be able to advance to the finals here. All right, thank you very much, guys. It's time to get ready for the first map. But no, I'm going to tease you. We're going to go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. Climb the tallest mountains and slay dragons. I defend my galaxy from ruthless aliens. I am never bored. I am stronger. I am faster. I am G1. stirs once more. Beneath its crags, cliffs, and rocks, there's evil in its core. Fire made flesh, dragon's breath, teeth and claws and flame, calling any heroes out there that are brave. <laughs> or just insane. Black Rock. Mountain, a Hearthstone adventure!
Welcome back to the second semi-finals between Bonnie and Paul, where Bonnie is currently leading 2-1 to one, and Nate, he is one map win away from making StarCraft 2 history tasteless. That's right, Artie. He's looking to go and write himself down in the echelons of esports history here with a grand final appearance in WCS if he can win just one more map. The next map we'll be playing on in this best of five is Expedition Lost. And as we can see, he's getting closer and closer to that trophy. Who wouldn't want a piece of that, Roddy? Oh, I would love a piece of that. That's we cool. are just about ready to start up game number four here as we are loaded in in the southwest position. One map from the grand finals in a rematch with Hydra. He's Liquid Bunny! And his opponent in the northeast who's won Plenty of championships in his career. Wants to add a third WCS. It's Polt. Well, if there's one thing that's set in stone is that Paul at least wins one tournament every single year. I think he's been doing that since 2011. Uh, he's definitely done it in 2013 and 2014. And of course, in the old days, he has won plenty of tournaments as well. 2015 is still young, but it's probably going to happen eventually. And the dream is still alive for Paul, of course, as well. He uh, he was on the ropes a little bit against 4GG as well in that game against Catalina, but he turned that one around. And then eventually later on in game five, he was able to close it out. Expedition lost, Nate. Talk to me. This could be a very explosive TVT as well, isn't it? That's right. So just the first thing that I need to point out is this map is just less than ideal for Reapers. You are not going to get Reaper harass. You are going to have a very hard time getting Reaper scouting. Both players are going to opt away from Reapers because of this. In fact, right next to this factory of Pult, or this barracks of Pult, is the only very small space that a Reaper can jump into the main. You can't go in from behind. You can't go from south of the ramp. And most of the place where you can jump up, it's actually not even that big. Like, it's a very small portion of what you can even see there. So Reapers are mostly written off in this uh, on this map by Terran players. So that's why both of them are going to rush straight to that factory. And every single time you tell me this, Nate, and every single time I believe you, and then I fire up a ladder game and I lose two workers, and I curse you out. <laughs> Silently. I mean, hey, I didn't, I didn't... I know. I'm just kidding, Nate. <laughs> I You're... didn't say there wouldn't be Reapers. I just said they shouldn't kill as much as they normally would. Yeah, I guess the default is all mine. Eh? Anyway, factory is going down. Of course, it makes perfect sense. You don't really want to go Reapers on a, on a map like this, or even, you know, in the old days, think of Daybreak, when there's only single entrance into yep. the main base. You know, you can still hop in, but you know that most likely you won't leave. And Reapers, they still slow your economy down a little bit. It's still an investment. You don't just want to make a unit like that and then just sacrifice it as soon as it gets its duty done one time. And that is scouting, of course. But, you know, most other maps, a Reaper can hop in and out multiple times and then confirm the latest scout as well. Yep, in this matchup, you're more likely to get a better chance of reading what your opponent's doing by a well-timed scan. And if you decide to go gas first, oftentimes you're out on the map with some sort of medevac or banshee harass anyway, which gives you more than enough intel since you usually open with enough units to be safe against any type of cheese or proxy play. Both players are opting for a quick second gas. In fact, these builds are lining up close to perfectly. Yeah. So we could see one of them could still end up going Raven. More likely that both of these guys really want to go Banshee, although Polt, he's, uh, you know, in this position, maybe he doesn't want to risk micring Banshee while he's being attacked. I can see Polt going for a Banshee, but I can also see Bonnie going for a Raven. I don't think it will be the other way around, but I can see it play out like that. We will see. Because I feel that Bonnie's, uh, he has to be very happy with the that he's had so far on this series. Think back of even the game on Catalina where he just knew that this was going to be same builds as well. He dropped his command center on the low ground. Paul was a little more careful and he was going to do it on the high ground. Paul is indeed opening up with the Banshee, but so All is right. Bonnie. Both players are going to go Banshee and, you know, oftentimes when we get to see situations like this, we're always wondering, it's like, well, you know, it's, it's very tricky because you're, it's all about controlling your defenses while getting that. Someone like 4GG just goes for the quick raven behind it. Bunny's going to get a widow mine. And look at the way that factory's rallying. He's, uh, he's doing something a little bit cheeky, as Kolaris would say. He's going to tuck it behind this refinery. Once he burrows it, that widow mine will be out of vision. Even if he scanned, he still wouldn't be able to see it. And all he needs is that mine to get one shot off on that Banshee for it to be an easy pickings for just a single Viking. Well, let's see if it's going to play out like that. If that would happen, that would, of course, be a disaster for Paul. who's going to follow things up with the Raven, by the way. No second Banshee madness, just a Raven behind this. So that's going to help him out a little bit against 
past the bun uh, Banshee of Bunny. Oh, the Banshees but, are going to pass by each yeah, other, too. Yeah, it's like, ah, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> well, it's like, I'm going off, yeah. off to work. It's like, yeah. well, nice We'll probably see never see work. each other again because I feel that we have <laughs> both very, uh, very, very grim future. But, you know, let's go out with a bang. Uh, cloak lining up perfectly for both players. If it comes in from this direction, it might still be able to get a couple of SUV kills or maybe just start working on these Marines. That's nice, at least for Paul. This is so intense right now as a Terran, by the way, isn't it? Like, you have to look on both sides of the map all the time. Yep. If, if you lose your Banshee, then the other guy can completely focus on harassing you. And at the same time, if you take too much damage at home, then you just, you're just way far behind. The Raven's out now for Bunny. He's managed to push the Banshee back for now. He actually got some damage onto Paul's Banshee, whereas Bunny's Still going strong. He's actually clearing out a few Marines. The last thing you want to do as the Terran player in this position is be forced wow. to spend your Raven energy on an auto turret. Yeah, this on. went much better for Bunny so far. His Benji still has a lot of HP. He already got four SUV kills as well. The, the, okay, almost ends up losing it over there. But uh, Paul misclicked as well. I'm not sure if you saw it, but one or two volleys went down on the tech lab. Those are small mistakes early game that truly hurt. Yep, that's a, that's a very nice trade because the handful of Marines that you've killed at this point are no longer as significant since you have that Viking out. But the key difference between these two players and the way that we've seen them play TVT in this series is Bunny's going to go for more Banshees and Pult's like, I just want Vikings. Please don't kill all my SCVs. Uh, very funny to see that Viking chasing that uh, Banshee, trying to get uh, that final shot off. A single hit will do. But unfortunately for Paul, he's not going to be able to achieve just that. Of course, there is a second command center finishing up for both players. The one of Paul was a tiny bit quicker, so that's going to allow him to uh, catch up economically. It's not a huge catch up that he has to do, but still, four or five workers, it does eventually add up. Yeah, I mean, to be perfectly honest, when I think about small things like this when it comes to catching up, Polt has been sloppier in that department. He's been making the unforced errors that have really opened up a lot of opportunities for Bunny when it comes to the supply blocks or the missed oh. worker cycles. And for Bunny, going that. for a really fast third command center, this is pretty brave by him considering how much two-base play we've seen out of <laughs> Polt in this series. Oh, the winner by <laughs> Well... You mentioned it earlier, and now Paul can just send it back immediately. It's like, well, if you harass with it now, it'll just die instantly. So he's going to scan, he's going to kill the mine. But Don't you think that Paul thinks right now is like, hey, that's my move. <laughs> <laughs> Get your own, man. This is what Paul has been doing in the previous games. At the same time, the uh, Banshee of Bunny is doing quite a bit of damage in the natural, again, getting two kills, and of course, mining time being lost over here. And you know as what? Well. Another one in the main base. Hello, baby. Guess who's back, Roddy? This Banshee <laughs> is just picking off units left and right. And as soon as he moves over to deal with that one, the other one's back towards the natural. Let's take a minute to work on a couple of SUVs and Marines, Nate. That's right. <laughs> he's going to pick that one off, though, right outside of that natural area. And he's actually clearing out the Marines. At this point, it doesn't really matter what he kills, as long as he can get a, a, a good number of them. He's going to run out of energy for Cloak, so these Vikings should be able to cut the Banshee off at one point or another. If he escapes with it, that's pretty awesome for Bunny, but, yeah. you know, it's not expected, and I he mean, will lose that Banshee. This is all awesome, of course, for Bunny. Don't get me wrong, but eventually he has to be a little bit careful because Paul is focusing more on unit production while Bunny is losing a couple of units for economic damage, and he's going up to three bases and he's going double eBay as well so he has to worry a tiny bit that Polt's army is going to be a little bit stronger than his army you know this push for Polt is really all he's got he's starting up some additional barracks but somehow Bunny got his infrastructure up including the barracks significantly faster than Polt yeah, and double eBay like Polt needs to do something with this build that's for sure the only advantage Polt has right now is that he has the Ravens with his Vikings, and he actually still has this Banshee, uh, but this first volley from the Marines, like he, everything is on this. But look how much faster Bunny Sim is going to be done. He doesn't need to buy that much time to hold it off against this. Oh, two things of repositioning right there. We can see it as well. A little bit of frustration on Paul's face. He does have that one Banshee in the mix this night, but Paul has been eating four or five tank shots already before this battle even starts. And Nate, you said it. Stim pack is done for Bunny in five seconds. And this is a very tough spot to be in. These siege tanks are only denying a single mineral pack the splash damage lets him hit a few other units. That Banshee, though. The yeah, Banshee is the really most annoying thing. He really needs to thing. keep these tanks alive. In fact, I, I, in fact, if he needs to boost that medevac over to save oh. it, he needs to do so very quickly. <laughs> Get the SCV repairing. Do not lose that siege tank, Bunny. All the turret harass, Nate. Actually, you know what? This this also uh, forces Bunny to get a supply block, too. 
A couple of Marines missed rallied over there. Four, five, six Marines oh, will boy. die. That's a nice little pick on for Bolt. 83 supply against 88. These auditors being super annoying. One tank will eventually take care of it, but no. we mentioned it before. Auditors, they soak up damage like champions. Yeah, I mean, the auto turrets do a nice job of denying some mining. What Bunny really needs... Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pick he's up, gonna, pick up, pick up. He's going to do that trick. You pick it up, oh. move it away. Oh, oh still no. loses the Marines. Forgot to move the Marines. Well, Paul is making something of this. <laughs> I don't know if Pult will break the 78 supply barrier, but he's uh, he's picked up a huge lead during all of this anyway. What a selfish tank. <laughs> it was all about the tank staying alive. Meanwhile, 7, 8, 9 Marines went down there. 13 SCVs have gone down for Bunny as well. Of course, he does have triple orbital. He's going to elevate a couple of units to the other side. He's going to try to uh, bomb rush his army, but that's quite a few tanks, and the Marines are in a very good defensive position as well for Paul. So yeah, instead, I, Bunny's going to march across the map, which I think is a better option in all yeah. craziness. With, with this many tanks and that Banshee to anchor him down, this is still really rough. In fact, <laughs> Bunny missing. right now, he's just lucky that Paul's not moving that Banshee towards the tank again because there's no missile turrets left. He actually picked off the turrets. Uh, he's got a couple Marines here, but he's going to be able to bait those into the tank fire. And has this been the MVP Banshee of the year so far for Paul or Walt? Like yeah, that Bunny, Banshee changed everything about this fight and stand up. Bunny needs to just stim into this natural right now, move out of the siege tank range and just try to focus that command center down. Unfortunately, uh, quick response time for Paul. But now that neither Banshee. player are mining off of their, their natural expansion, they've still got a bit of work they can do. But Banshee has 18 kills already. And it's not going to die, and it has dictated everything over here. That, that Banshee's pretty much, in, in all honesty, won this game for Paul. Like, Bunny has a lot of work to do if he wants to bring this oh, game back wow. now. That, killing that orb, though, that would be a great start, but there are just too many units over here for Paul. Bunny at 80 supply. He's been hovering around 80 supply for the last two, three, four minutes in this game, while Paul, even though it's slowly, it's still steady, he's going up in supply. And the medevacs are actually working out really <laughs> nicely here for these Marines. That combat shield been quite difficult for him to finish those off. Oh. Bunny's going to move out now. He's going to push these siege tanks away. And it looks like he's bought himself a good amount of space. He's not. Oh, he is in range. All the Vikings land on this. Okay, he's going to kill the medevac first. But he might land the Vikings and just rush in. Pult trying to end it right here, right now. And he just might be able to do so. As there's only three Marines in production for Bunny. He's got nothing left. <laughs> He's got, still got one Marine on the other side of the map that will wow. get taken out as well. Poor Billy. <laughs> he killed eight SUVs. No, no, no. Billy would have survived that name. <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> there is a triple orbital over here, though, for Bonnie. That is like the only thing that he can sort of hang on to. Uh, and does he have a minor upgrade adventures? No. Actually, it's all dead, even in upgrades. This is an incredible uphill battle for him to fight. Yeah, hey, oh, you man. mean the supply difference being so heavily <laughs> in both army and workers, though, is where this is the real kicker. Like, the falling back on this third command center is something that we've oftentimes seen Terran players be able to do, but this yep. is just, I don't I don't really see a way that Bunny's able to do this unless he can get some sort of really weird drop, or, but he doesn't have any units to drop. I mean, Paul is obviously not going to lay low over here. He knows that he just, like, really disrupted the mining of Bunny forever. He's took a lot of damage uh -huh. as well. Bunny sent three medevacs full of units on the other side of the map. So Paul knows that for him right now, number one priority is just keep on the pressure and just, like, try to outmatch your opponent, and that's exactly what he's going to do. I mean, if Bunny had, like, found an opportunity to knock those rocks down at some point, either to cut off reinforcements or prevent a second attack, maybe, but this army should not be stoppable for Paul. Supply depots in production or not, as he moves up to the natural. Bunny's going to land one Metamac inside of Polt's production, but this is not going to win in the game. Well, uh, it's an annoying drop for Polt to take care of, but he's going to work on this orbital. He should be able to take out one of these three orbitals. And above all, he's taking down a lot of SCVs again. He's taking down Marines. He's working on these Metamacs, picking up that base, and he's going to defend at home and will most likely even up the series right here, right now, which means we will go to game five. That's right, Roddy. Bunny's last drop does get cleaned up. Even the medevac looks like it will not escape. There's a scan in that army, and GG's call. Pult has tied things up here in the second semifinal. Oh, that push, Nate, you said it by the time it started. That push is all he's got. He was down a base. He didn't have double eBay, and there were already tanks in position for Bunny. It really looked like it was a manageable position, especially after one or two tanks were able to get one or two shots off on the units of Pult before the fighting even started. You saw there was frustration on Paul's face. He was shaking his head a little. Something you rarely see, by the way. He almost never shows any emotions in the middle of a series. But he was still able to turn it around. That Banshee deserves a Medal of Honor, a Purple Heart. Give it everything, Nate. Yeah. The, the most crucial moment is right around the time that that Seeker missile got thrown onto those two <laughs> tanks. Like, And it, perhaps even a little bit earlier, in, in TVT, 
it's all about momentum with the army and the pushes because if you defend a big push like that and you can keep most of your forces intact, like, you know, by getting siege tank volleys that are good or, in my opinion, pulling SCVs since he had a third orbital command to fall back on, then Bunny's got a better chance. But Bunny played that situation out like it was an actual stalemate where they both had an even amount of stuff to work with. But Bunny had the third orbital command. He had the scans to, to either know what was going on back at Pult Space but also, he had the luxury of being able to pull SCVs to defend against that. Instead, all the SCVs just died to siege tank fire, and he was never able to get anything tangible out of them since they couldn't mine anyway. And you know, he wasn't even down in army supply. Like, that was the no. most... Because, like, the moment I saw the pull marching out, and I realized that how much he was committed to this attack, I was like, well, okay, at least he should have an army supply advantage, right? And I looked, and they're, like, both hovering around 40 to 44. Like, it was that even. So, the, remarkable that Paul made it work. The ideal move in that scenario and that, you know, just, just from the experience of being able to see how other Terran players react and may, perhaps Bunny didn't quite feel comfortable because he did have the energy to throw those scans is you, you try to keep your eyes on that army. As soon as one or two of those tanks on siege, you yeah. rush with everything because as soon as you clean that up, even if you lose all the SCVs in the front line, you have a couple Marines left over to counter and then your third command center will back you up in re restoring those lost SCVs while simultaneously muling up. But this is it. It all comes down to this for our two players on dead wing cross spawns in the top right the blue tear representing team liquid can he do it it's bunny on the left bottom side of dead wing we have a red terran player representing cooler master storm it is bolt bunny on the precipice of greatness to make it into his second Premier Tournament Finals. And you know, this easily the biggest finals appearance that he would make to get here to kick off the year 2015, where many people are now touting him as the number one non-Korean player uh, overall. This is such a momentous occasion for Bunny to get to that grand final. He's the only oh. player that's been able to take maps off of Hydra as a Terran in the course of the last month. And this is the best opportunity anybody's going to have at stopping him if he can win this map, this map right now. I mean, there was Moro, of course. Nate. Well, Moro. Yeah. I, I was uh, thinking in the... You were thinking, thinking of human beings. Moro is a literal god. Yeah, well, he's a real pro <laughs> game, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't count people that, are, that aren't mortal. You know? <laughs> Bunny's opening up gas first, while Polt uh, is refining he's a little bit later, I believe. Uh, is he going to be aggressive cross-map Deadwing, Nate? I mean, it's tricky to do. Like, you have the large map spawns, so the Banshees actually build up more energy on their way to your opponent. It's more difficult for a Viking to find a Banshee and catch it. And I still think that Bunny's got to stick to his guns. He's got to stick with what he's good at because it could also be those uh, vertical spawns. And this is still a situation where Polk could be opening up with a, with a gas first as well. And he doesn't want to open up Reaper Expand because it can also be harder to scout on a map this big if you go with an SCV. Uh, I think that Paul this is going to open up Reaper Expand as we already see the Reaper on the production tab. I am very curious to see if he has the, you know, the courage, the confidence to drop that command center on low ground, which I really don't think so. Even though I do think that Paul is expecting the exact same opening from Bunny. Uh, he's expecting Bunny to do the same thing as him, but I don't think that he wants to build a command center on low ground. I think he's going to build it on the high ground. Yeah. Paul? His, I think he's realized, like, you know what? He, he recognizes that he's been playing a little bit slow. He's been making a couple of more unforced errors throughout the course of this tournament. And he doesn't want to be caught off guard by anything that he hasn't prepared for since. It's been pretty clear that he's not quite as sharp as he used to be, but still good enough to get to this point in the WCS tournament. Uh, he's, still, he's still, of course, absolutely amazing. Pope yeah. is still a world-class StarCraft player. But, you know, when we are saying this, like, we've also been talking with him, and he's just not the practice beast that he once upon a time was. Of course, he will still keep up his daily practice. He will still watch a lot of he, StarCraft. He's been studying a bit more, yeah. too, recently. And he still plays a lot, but he's definitely not playing, like, every single day, grinding it out, trying to get better at all costs, you know, trying to be the next Pro League monster. Like, no, those are not Paul's ambitions. Paul just wants to be happy in life and continue what he's been doing for the last three years, and that is win the occasional StarCraft tournament. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, I'm fine. You just, you know, win a Premier Tournament here, <laughs> one there. I don't I don't need to win all of them, guys. No. I'm not greedy, you know. <laughs> no, just, just the most important ones. That is very nice of him, though, you know. Yeah. 
You know, MVP was on a real greed streak for a while. <laughs> and, uh, this guy just showed up to every tournament. He was like, I'm better than yeah. everybody, so give me all your give me your ladder points and your money. Uh, and Paul is just like, guys, sharing is caring. As, as long as I win one or two a year, you know, we're all good. I'm happy. You guys are happy. And, you know, we're watching some awesome Starcraft together. I want to talk about the build the Bunny's going for because it is pretty crazy. A tiny supply block. I assume this build is a bit tricky to do, so maybe this is planned as part of it. But he's going for a really, really fast tank drop. And this is not something that you see in Terran versus Terran all that much. Oh, in fact, seeing this tank. tank should immediately put Paul on red alert mode. He has very few units to work with. This widow mine, we have to keep our eyes on this bad boy because he will be very important in defending whatever it is that Bunny ends up doing. He's not going to be going for the, that drop behind the natural. Oh. He wants to make a push on the main base, most likely with this. You saw the click, actually. Uh, right now, it's click right next to the rocks. I don't think the Medifex is going to fly over there. If the mine would have gone a little bit more to the left side, then there is a chance that it would have been in on the path of that Medifex. The Marines are going to try to intercept it. If Paul is able... To, no, he's waiting at the ramp. A little bit to the left, to the left. Everything you want in a box to the left, Nate. Well, yeah, in, a, in a floating box to the left, but it's going to boost by now. He's got that tank. And here's the thing. He wants to keep the tank on the low ground because pulling SCVs will overwhelm this pretty quickly. If he sieges that bad boy up, it no. won't be too difficult for him to overwhelm it. There's a lot of damage output already okay, on that he's, Viking. He's got to target fire the Marines with this siege tank because I feel the best solution for Pult to deal with this is to pull SCVs. Okay, here come the workers out of the natural expansion. Marines want to kill those. He is target firing down these Marines, but no SCVs to repair. He will lose the siege what? tank, and Pult's going to hold for now. The follow-up is more important for Bunny. He's going into the Banshee play, but already this feels like a pretty awkward start for yeah. the Liquid Terran. Uh, what a crazy build, Nate. Uh, why? I, I've really, really seen this opening cross map that wing. Maybe he was hoping for vertical spawns. That's the only thing I can imagine. Very, very wild build over here by Bonnie. Paul handled it very well so far. Of course, he lost a couple of SCVs, but he already has two orbitals up and running. The cloak follow-up, like you mentioned, is very key. But Paul, he hasn't been cutting a whole lot of corners. He hasn't been flawless, but you can say a lot about him. He's not a corner-cutting Terran in general, and he has his missile turrets in place again. Bunny does make the best follow-up move to go straight to three command centers. He yeah, recognizes cool. that he did not do anywhere remotely close to the amount of damage he wanted to with that tank drop play. That being said, Banshee kills are very important still. Three command centers won't help you recover as much as a few worker kills this yeah. early in the game would. Scan goes down. Uh, Banshee might actually be able to make it out there, Nate. Uh, oh, so close. Uh, that would have been really nice if you could keep that alive since uh, he has that second one coming over. And now the Vikings can continue to focus on picking off one at a time. Uh, oh, keep man. in mind here that Bunny is also going into Vikings behind this himself. He's done with the Banshee phase, at least for now. That oh. mine. Well, there's one more Banshee guy heading across the map, and I'm actually very scared for Bunny right now. Just look at the supply. 67 already against 44. It's going to take a long time before that triple orbiter will truly kick in uh, for Bunny. And Paul, this has been doing a, ph a phenomenal job so far in defending both phases of the aggression that Bunny has been throwing at him. First with the tank and the medevac, and then the Banshee follow-up. It's so unfortunate for Bunny that in Game 5 of the semifinals, he has the most unsuccessful bench here arrest that he's had throughout this entire tournament. Yeah. Bunny, Bunny realizes he needs to make a couple of acute moves to bring this series back, and he's going to go for double engineering bay with three command centers. He's a greedy boy, Rotterdam. He's a greedy boy, but crossbond dead wing, I think there's very few positions where being greedy would work uh, less. Small supply block for Pold. Once more, uh, the depot is only halfway done, so that, you know, these kind of things, they will help Bunny catching up a little bit. And that is very important. A lot of support, of course, from the European Terran scene. A lot of people love to see Bunny make it to the final. It's been a long time. Of course, the last time that a non-Korean made it to the final of either WCS America or WCS Europe was Stefano in 2013 Season 1. Since then, a couple of players have come close. Velmo had a lot of good runs. Vortex had a lot of good runs. Even Hawk uh, has made it to the quarterfinals uh, once, I believe. And a few other foreigners. Grubby made it to the semis once a long time ago. But nobody has done what Stefano did. Bunny has been coming very close, but this game, Nate, he needs to fight an uphill economic battle. Yeah, Bunny put all the gears in motion to get himself back into this game, but he needs time, Roddy. Time is not a resource that Polt wants him to give, as wants to give him, excuse me, as he moves up. He's got this mine here, which 
Kills an SCV, but that doesn't tell him exactly what's coming. There's the big scan from Paul, and he's getting ready to move in. If he wins this game, he's got a rematch with Hydra. Uh, so five seconds ago to go for Stim. I mean, army supply, Paul doesn't have a massive advantage. He definitely has an advantage, but it's not ridiculous. First hits already go off on the tank of Bunny. This tank is so important. Oh, uh, losing tank that tank. Immediately. And now the natural is forfeit for Bunny. These Marines are going to step up. He can start to inch these tanks forward little bit by bit. And with the Vikings and the extra hit points on those multiple Vikings, he could actually just, I mean, he could just target down and pick this one off. But basically the problem now is that Bunny doesn't have control of his natural. These tanks are just going to continue to shell away. Yep, uh, of course. He's got, to, he's got to move his forces down. That Widow Mine is active again, too. Uh, okay, the longer this takes, though, the better it is, of course, for Bunny, because it's very hard to reinforce any sort of push cross map Dead Wing. Please be aware of that Widow Mine, Bunny, I would say, because imagine if he runs like 10, 15 Marines into it. Instead, I think he's just waiting, maybe intercepting a couple of reinforcements. I hope he spots that mine. Now he's. Sh uh. Yeah, okay, he's gonna scan and kill the mine. It actually still fires and kills a few Marines. But now Polt realizes that there's a potential for Bunny to just unsiege his tank and try to bum rush this, which, in my opinion, is the ideal move. But can he actually, does he have enough to actually kill this? I think he's waiting, Nate. Seven seconds to go until Combat Shield is ready. He's gonna have to go real quick, though. Otherwise, uh, Polt will reinforce this position and he's gonna make it stronger. That will make it even harder to break. He pretty much has to go right now. Polt doesn't have Combat Shield yet. This has to be Bunny's moment. Yeah, this is it here and now. He's gonna move in. He's got a great spot. Spread these siege tanks do not actually end up clearing out all the marines. Oh, so oh, Bunny oh. staying alive for now. Uh, uh, sorry, get carried away. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That really couldn't have been timed any better. He just got combat shield. Paul just didn't. But of course, Paul is still in a great position. Uh, Paul yeah, still got done there what he was looking for. He did a lot of economic damage. And Paul knew that it was going to be very hard to reinforce that position, cross map that wing. But he definitely got some value for that investment. Bunny's whole army out on the map as Paul gets a drop inside the main base, pushing these SCVs away. Forcing that commander to left. They're going to run into each other in the center of the map. Bunny actually gets the first couple volleys off. So nice. Nicely for him, he can actually chase down these siege tanks and starts to get a bit of momentum, but he needs to clear his main base. Well, he's going to siege up a tank, so that's something. He's still chasing those units as well. Gets one mad effect. Army supply, it's actually closer than it's ever been. He's going to pick up everything and fly to the main base. 48 army supply against 50. There is a tank there. There's a missile turret as well. Let's see how this one plays out. This game is just absolute madness right now. Bunny's trying to make the dream come alive right now with he this big it, play. Yeah. He's in the main mineral line. He's mowing down nine SCVs already, but here comes the big pull. SCVs and Marines for pull. Going to surround this army. Picks off the siege tanks. Medivacs load up. Bunny's looking for way out. He's managed to get pull below 100 supply, but now there's Marines in his natural. Uh, he needs to take care of this drop because he did do a lot of economic damage now as well on the other side of the map. Uh, the orbital starting to run a little bit low on HP. More Marines getting picked off. Very, very good job there by Paul. Picking up those units, getting out of there, and still keeping on pressure of Bunny as well. For a split second there, Bunny had more army supply. And of course, Paul has been ahead in this game for the last five minutes. But in TVT, Nate, you know it. One bad engagement where you don't have too many units to work with. And if there are three tanks on top of your production, it can end right there. So Paul handled that very, very well. Yeah, Paul is now in a dominating position. His plus two is about to complete. He's evened out that armor upgrade. There is a drop in the back of his main base, but his production line should be strong enough to actually kick this drop out and almost getting the meta back there. So a few Marines are left behind. But more importantly, Paul is up 33 workers. He has a third orbital command to drop mules from now as well. <laughs> 23, Nate. 23. Math on stream, not even once. I eyeballed it. <laughs> <laughs> but still a whole lot of workers, doesn't change your point. Paul's still very far ahead economically. Uh, and of course, you know, during all that, or a couple minutes ago already, Paul secured his third orbital as well, so Bunny doesn't have that advantage anymore either. Plus two is about to finish up for Paul. That's one more advantage that he has going for himself. He throws up two sensor towers. He doesn't want to be caught out of position anymore. Army supply, 74 against 92. Like, that's the only thing that's remotely close, but it's safe to say Bunny needs to make a play within the next two minutes. Otherwise, this is going to be an unfair fight. Yeah, there, there really shouldn't be a way for him to take this, even with this upgrade advantage. He moves in. Great snipe on the siege tank. When you have inferior upgraded marines, you can't, you're can't. you not going to win without the tank support. Paul's no, no. simming very far forward. Maybe this is a moment to turn around because he has the Metafax over here. And it takes a little while before the Metafax of Paul show up. The uh, bunny see? sports. I mean, he's got the numbers advantage here. It does have oh, to clean up another drop in the back of his face. Oh but he God. cleared out the whole mineral line. 14 more SCVs were just killed. Oh, that's devastating for Bunny. 17 SCVs against 54. And from this point on, Paul has to know that he doesn't even have to put that much pressure 
pressure anymore. You can slowly but steadily just start seeing this one out. Just make sure that you can pump out as many units as you can because Paul is totally aware of the fact right now that he's heavily outproducing Bunny. Yeah, Bunny's going to get into another engagement in the center of the map. These plus two is not yet ready, so those are superior forces, superior numbers, and upgrades for Paul allowed to clear this out, and GG's called. Paul oh, will go on to face Hydra in the grand finals for the World Championship Series Season 1 Premier League. Big sigh of relief right there for Paul. Then, you know, of course it would have been cool to see the European, but it's also so awesome to see Paul just do it again. This is his third final of a WCS Premier League or a WCS America. He had to work so incredibly hard for this series, but I mean, he played like a champ, Nate. Yeah, I mean, Polt did what Polt does best. He's down 1-2. It took him a really difficult time to get there, but he made it happen. Yep. Let's see what the man has to say about that series himself and, of course, about his upcoming final. Polt on stage with Sue. Thank you very much, Kevin. Boy, did give it up for your second grand finalist, Polt! <laughs> Colt, you just came out of a very intense Terran versus Terran series against 4GG. Surely you must not have expected this Terran versus Terran series to be this difficult. Bunny. Yes, Bunny. You said that Bunny had a very different style from 4GG, but did you expect that he would put up this hard of a fight? Actually, when I was preparing for my poll this weekend, I expected just uh, at most one best of five for TBT, but unfortunately I had two TBTs and because I only prepared like two or two build orders for just one player, but I used all of them against 4GG, so Bunny knew everything what I, want, what I, I was going to do, so it was very, very difficult. I want to focus on that game three because it was so intense and back and forth and unfortunately after that loss you were down 2-1. Despite that you seemed so calm when the camera panned towards you and you were able to come back in game four. How were you able to do that? Um, all of my loss happened in the beginning of the game. Well actually uh, in the first game he played very well. It, it was kind of loss in the macro game but from the first game I figured out what he likes to play and from the third game, I figured out if I don't die in the early game, I'm going to win the game. All right, well, this is your first time in the grand finals of a WTS since 2013. After nearly two years, what is it like being back on this stage? Actually, I didn't know it's been that long, but since it's been like two years, this is the time. All right, well, you sound very confident, but Hydra, your opponent, is also very confident. He has stated that no player can stop him except maybe David Kim. I'm sure you have something to say back to him. Yeah, he, he's also um, ahead in head-to-head -head against me. Well, 4 gg was the same. He was like 5-0 or something like that. And I beat 4 gg revenge, and the same thing's going to happen. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Best of luck in the Grand Finals. I can't wait to see who will come out on top. We'll find out soon enough, but before then, let's head back to the cast.